Hey, Andre, can you believe it's been over a year and 12,000 miles later since we took delivery of this Hyundai Santa Cruz compact pickup truck? No, I cannot believe it. It seems like only last month uh, we were just getting this. Yeah, and in this video, we are going to give you a complete long-term year wrap-up. Basically, what it's like to live with a Santa Cruz for a year. So we're going to be talking about fuel efficiency. We're going to be talking about off-roading. And guess what, Andre? We're going to be talking about drag racing. Power! All right, let's yes. start where we always start, and that is with styling. What do you think? Are you happy with the color and the styling? Yeah, I, I am totally happy. You know what I'm most happy about? Is the design where these lights are actually entering the grill. I think it's super unique. And when I pull up, I don't know, when I go shopping at King Super's grocery store, people notice. Yeah, and this cactus color is really unusual as well. I think, uh, you know, it might be kind of popular and it might get kind of dated quickly, but for now, I still really love it. What's well, kind of blends in into this dirt. <laughs> it's kind of camouflaged. So here's the funny thing. When we first heard about this car, we went to Hyundai and we said, Wait, wait, wait. You called it a car? Truck. Sorry, you're right. Truck. <laughs> when we first heard about this trucklet. Truckster? Truckster. Compact truck? Yes. We went to Hyundai and said, hey, we want the base one and we didn't get that. What did we get? No, this is a turbocharged one. So there's two versions of it really, right? Yeah. There's a 2.5 liter base non-turbo and then there's a turbocharged one, which is what this is. And it's got a dual clutch eight-speed transmission. Whereas the smaller engine has a classic eight-speed with the torque converter. And that will become important when we talk about off-roading. But before we get to all that, let's talk about the usefulness of this. As you guys know, this competes directly. Well, not this one, this one's expensive. How much was it, Andre? Well, this is almost 40K. Yeah. So like 39,000 for this SEL. But in terms of size and capability, it competes with the Ford Maverick. Now the Ford Maverick is more of a trucky truck, right? This is more of a California surfing cruising truck. I would agree. Yeah, and this is a little bit more lifestyle oriented, right? Yeah, we uh, actually spoke with the designer and that was what he was going for, right? He wanted something that you could throw in your wetsuit, throw in a surfboard and something with a little bit more kind of lifestyle potential unless, you know, loaded up with hay or manure. <laughs> I wouldn't, I wouldn't saying, want to haul manure in this one. I'm not saying or the Maverick. I'm not saying people haul manure in the Maverick, but they might. <laughs> <laughs> What's the payload? You mean fertilizer, right? It's got not a, manure. It's actually got a pretty good payload. But but this came with this. Um, yeah, it does. We'll show that yeah. soon. But this has this uh, retractable tonneau cover. By the way, it still works. Yeah, it does. Unlike the Rivian. <laughs> I, love, I like that the Rivian that always gets stuck. Uh, it's kind of complicated, but. We, we do have the storage cubby. Yeah, and it's useful to an extent. The storage cubby isn't very deep, so you could put a wetsuit in there. You could, I don't know, make it a kind of a tailgating uh, chiller, cooler, yeah. right? So uh, I do have a story about this. Yes. So in January 1st, I usually go skiing and I took my entire family with all of our ski boots and our skis and everything fit. My four ski, four pairs of skis, four boots. I, I put stuff underneath here. I, I tucked everything everywhere. So it's actually kind of useful for a family of four. Yeah, and uh, the problem with the tonneau cover is that it takes away a lot of space. So if you want to put a motorcycle in here or a bicycle. Uh, that's tough. Yeah, you're yeah. really looking at like a four foot bed, which has a half a foot gone because of this cover. Yes. So, um, and this doesn't have a hitch. I mean, we did really want it to have a hitch and this one didn't come equipped with it. You could add it, right? You could add a towing package. It does not come with a brake controller. You should add it later. And as Nathan found out, some of the wiring harness got recalled on this. Yeah, that's a whole different, these. That's yes. a whole different story. But, but up to 5,000 pounds. Yeah, why don't you show them the uh, payload? Because the payload is pretty astounding for a small truck. It is. It is really astounding. 1,411 pounds, which is like a, almost a full-size truck territory for some full-size trucks. Well, keep in mind that like the Gladiator barely has 1,000. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and that's a mid-size truck. So for all of you guys who aren't truck guys and gals, it starts with compact truck, the mid-size truck, the full-size truck, the heavy-duty truck. Yeah. Uh, and, uh, and this is a really great pay payload for a it truck is. like it's this. It's pretty amazing. Now, the other thing I like about this is, uh, you know, you've got storage space under the seats, which you kind of showed, right? Yeah. There's a little bit of, there's the big cubby down here, uh, which is nice. Uh, you know, if you've got spare, uh, I don't know, tubes for your bicycle, if you're using it as a lifestyle truck, I guess 
sex wax for your skis or is it for your surfboard? Uh, uh, I don't know what you're talking about. It's actually not bad. So Andre is six three, and I'm sitting. Let me. Let me. I'm sitting behind him. Okay. And I have good headroom. And actually, the other nice thing is a lot of midsize truck. This back seat is bolt upright, and here I'm not bolt upright. So it's nice to have a little bit of like wiggle room. It's not cavernous, you know, it's a small truck, but it's not bad. Yeah, uh, so your knees actually fit? Yeah, my knees fit, look, and my head fits. We said a year, over a year, right? So 12,455. And these are, I mean, pretty tough miles because we uh, drove it in the winter, in the mountains. See this headrest? Yes. When you put your head up against it, it yeah. kind, of, kind of grabs your hair. At least mine. It kind of grabs my hair, and I, I feel it pulling at my hair. I don't know what it is about the material, but it's a little like... Uh, well, my shorter welcome. hair is okay right now. Yeah, mine, mine gets kind of grabbed, and it, it kind of sticks. I do feel it right now. Yeah, it pulls yeah, at you, your hair. Yeah, you're right. It's kind of weird, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. It's a little Velcro-y. Okay, yeah. You want to pop the hood? Yeah, let's, let's pop it. Now, this is full-time all-wheel drive. You could also get a, uh, like front wheel drive versions exactly. but here in Colorado that, that would not be bueno or bueno uh, no so there's no strut so you have to use a little stick little prop stick on this side oh, I hate this I hate these little well it's springtime yeah, I, I hate I hate that it's springtime and sorry we did take this off road we'll talk about that a little bit later so this engine is quite powerful and we'll actually toss to a drag race in a second, uh, in a second. But 281 horsepower and 311 pound-feet of torque, and and the dual clutch transmission. Actually, we had an issue with. Yeah, let's talk about that. So, yeah. uh, over the course of a year, we've really had only one major issue, and that was a recall on the dual clutch transmission. And yes. when first we recalled it, what happened was it made the car, and I'm going to be honest about this, almost undrivable. Yeah, so it was kind of jerky, right? Yeah. At, at slow speed, it was. It never left us stranded. No, no, okay? no. But you, but you, it was jerky. And then they said not to drive it un until you took it to the dealer, right? Yes. Yes. So that was pretty big deal. And then, then you know, we had it retuned a second time. Reprogrammed. Yeah. And then it became wonderful. Yes. So it kind of got back to its old self, right? Where it was actually driving pretty well. But let's face it, Andre. Dual clutches are great in one condition racing which is racing because <laughs> they're very quick on shifting but they're certainly not great and we'll talk about this in a second off-road and they're certainly not great in stop and go traffic because they become kind of herky-jerky right the car is yeah. always kind of looking for a gear uh, and they're actually not good at drag racing as we found out when we took a drag racing now it did well we'll show that video yeah let's, let's just go to it Clutch did not take off at all. <laughs> Come on, Santa Cruz, go, go, go! Come on! You know, this thing just does not want to launch. It's the weirdest thing, Andre. Oh, what happened? Was it like, uh, was there, was there like a moment of hesitation? Yeah, this dual clutch, you know, I'm trying to do a little bit of, let me try something else here. Can we do it one more time? I think if I just floor it, it might be better. Hold on, let me just try flooring it. Yeah, it's much better. Let's do one more, okay? You, you're still not going to win, dude. Well, what are you trying to do? Five, four, three, two, one. Much closer, much closer. He's still getting away, but not by as much. Okay. Yeah, I've had a better launch, but you know, I can tell you about a story where I went to Utah and I uh, test drove uh, several Raptors there. Come on, little turbo, come on, tiny truck. Fifteen point three three, Andre, at ninety-five miles an hour. Let's power this up. Yeah, 
So before we go for our drive, let me tell you another thing that I really don't like about it. What? Uh, and that is um, this piano black, right? Well, I just wiped it. Yes, you did. I, I'm glad you did because <laughs> up here, you didn't wipe it and you can see all the dust and you can see all of the... It's almost a magnet for dust, right? Whereas here it's clean. The yes. other thing you get are fingerprints everywhere. And I, I just, please automakers, stop with the piano black. It just is not good because this is... This is just too much of a dust magnet. I, all I do is I, all I do is I walk around and wipe it off every time I get in it. There you go. Well, let me start it off and pull away. How you know, go ahead. I, I was going to say I do like the design. Other than that, because it's got this kind of a double, double cockpit. You yeah, kind of like an old Mustang. Yeah, yeah. I really appreciate that. Double I, binnacle. Yeah, double double binnacle. I also would rather have real buttons for the HVAC. Oh, yes. I'm, I'm not a big fan of... And also radio. Yeah. We do have a tune knob, which is nice, and we do have a volume knob, which is nice. Uh, and in all, overall, this is kind of uh, relatively easy to live with. Uh, I think Hyundai does a good job with their infotainment. Uh, I also like the gauges. Uh, the steering wheel is a little funky. It's a little... But uh, sporty. It's a little funky. I like it. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm kind of a fan of it. Uh, you could put your hand in many places. Also, you can... Um, kind of upshift or downshift. Do you ever use that? No. no. <laughs> but but I can tell my friends, hey, uh, I have I uh, have paddle shifters. Okay. And we do have heated seats, um, and we also have, uh, like I said, a backup camera, but no 360. Uh, no. And for an expensive model like this, it needs to have 360. And over here we have a phone charger, which is nice, a USB, uh, and US actually two USBs. I'm yeah. Where's the USB C? Yeah. Where's that at? 12 volt. It's a year old and it's already out of date. <laughs> How does it drive, Andre? It drives, you know, it drives like a crossover. Yeah. Yeah, it drives really, really, like, it's it's comfortable. So it's not, does not drive like a pickup truck. Well, you know, it is kind of very similar to the Tucson, right? Yeah. So it's like, a, I mean, once it, again, it's, right? It's a crossover. Yeah, well, like Jeep hates when you call the Gladiator a Wrangler with a bed. Yeah, it, I, I know that it's more a, than that. Is this a Tucson? with a bed well i know they they kind of took a they slightly to heavier rear section from the um santa fe yep and the rest of it is kind of tucson right yes so it is a little bit more than a tucson with a bed how about the brakes uh let me let me test it let me no you know the brakes i never had the problem with yeah they Just were really good brakes. they're linear and they're uh you know yeah really good brakes. modulated uh, and if you're looking for, like, road feel, this is probably, like you said, not the car to have it. Oh, look at the it power, Andre. It accelerates really well, dude. But not from a stop, as we found out when we drag raced it. <laughs> it takes a while to get going. Yeah. You have to time it just right. Yeah, yeah. And it is a little bit compact. Now, granted, we're both big guys, but I do feel a little bit too close to you, <laughs> if I'm being honest. Well, it's a small pickup. It it's is. like a midsize. It's, you know, it's like as wide as a midsize. Yeah, but a midsize would be a little bit bigger, a little bit taller, yeah. a little bit more uh, road presenty. Now, of course, people may be wondering, how does the turbo do when it comes to fuel economy? And we have a video. I'm glad you asked, because I did a longer journey on camera, and um, I checked out highway efficiency. Should we roll that video now? Yeah, let's roll that video before we talk about off-roading. Ah, uh, finally, I've been wanting to do this for a very long time. I wanted to take the Hyundai Santa Cruz on a road trip and this is exactly what I'm doing about 180 miles plus in the Colorado Rocky Mountains okay 87 same thing get it in there and we went just about 193 miles all right, there you have it, basically six gallons. So let's do the calculation now. 192.9 miles, according to the trip meter, divide by 6.082 gallons equals, woo -hoo -hoo, yes, 31.7. It's better than the truck is saying. It's surprising, it's better than the EPA says. Uh, I'm super pleased. So, yes, the answer to the question, is the Hyundai Santa Cruz a great road trip, little compact pickup truck? Yes, the answer is an absolute yes for me because I don't feel super tired after about three and a half hours in the seat. I, it was comfortable, quiet, 
nice and relatively efficient. Yeah, it drives pretty well and it's actually pretty fuel efficient if you drive it on the highway. On the highway. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> City, not so much. Yes. Now there's one more thing that we did with this, which is take it off road. So let's start with the tires, Andre. Yeah, well, these tires are not off-roady no, per se. Not. I mean, they're kind of all seasons. Uh, these are actually the uh, the Kumho. Are you stuck? <laughs> not saying. What? Uh, I'm sorry. Kumho. Uh, Krujan. Yeah. Well, that's what Krugin. I told you. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry. The 24560 R18s. Yes. Uh, but. And but they've had they have 12 over 12,000 miles on them and the tread i mean usually a brand new vehicle the tread seems to go away immediately right yeah this these tires still have a little bit of life left in them and i actually when i talked told you about um winter driving this is actually not awful in the snow it's, it's actually pretty good in the snow it's not great in the snow no it's not i wouldn't say get the tire for the snow no but as far as an old season tire is concerned um, I actually had good luck oh, with can, these. Can I tell you a secret? What? Can I tell you a secret? What? Come here, come here. Any car is excellent with snow tires in the snow. But it's got to be snow tires. But this is all-wheel drive. I know. But look, all-wheel drive is nowhere near as good as snow tires in the snow because yeah. it's not just about going. It's about stopping and yes. turning. Yes. Anyway, so, 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 if I had this, again, I would put snow tires on in the winter. Yeah. Or maybe if we wanted to, we could have put a little bit beefier off-road like tires. all terrain -y tires this is not all terrain yeah but it does have some off-road chops so it does have an electronic locking center diff yes and it has downhill uh hill Hill descent assist. control yeah. but it does have a dual clutch and when we took it off-road we found out that that was the achilles heel of this dual clutches sometimes overheat yes. or they got get hot right but what but happened you know let's just show the video uh, let's roll it welcome to the santa cruz so i'm gonna go into smart mode now there are, now first we should so, probably explain that, so there's like several. four modes. Yes. Uh, there's sport, there's smart, there's snow, and then there was one other. And normal. Normal, Just that's it. every okay. day. Yeah. So I think smart needs to help and figure these things out for us. And then the center locker for the all-wheel drive H-Track system right. is just distributes power pretty evenly front and back. 50-50 front and rear, essentially. Um, so between that and the traction control system, it should mitigate wheel spin, which we're having right now. Yes, and which we're having a lot of. Come on. There it goes. Now there is another video where Andre and I actually took a Santa Cruz up the other obstacle. Oh. And you guys will be able to see that. Yes. But this is already very challenging for traction and for some articulation. And so far we are struggling. Andre is staying on the accelerator, but we have to stop at this tree, and that's going to make the things difficult. And you know, also, I'm using almost 100% throttle on okay. some of these. So we're at the tree. Okay, it's a tree. So I'm going to pause. Uh huh. Okay. We're, there's every I, I, mode. I don't think I can pull any more uh, buttons, can nope. I? Traction control disabled. How about that? Try it. Come on, dual clutch. Dual clutch tends to roll back. Oh, it did roll back. Oh, did, did you hear that? Yep. Throwing up some rocks. No. Hope our photographers are going to be safe. Okay. Wow. It's okay, though. No, but it, it did it. But really, this is near the maximum of this vehicle's capacity. I would recommend for anybody who's going to buy one of these and wants to go into the rough, change the tires. First thing you do. Definitely. Tires are a huge part of uh, um, Huge part of it. Absolutely. Yes. But it did it. All right, Andre, I just did a long-term, well, 5,000 mile review over a TFL EV on our Bolt. Okay. And, uh, I added a new category. You know how we used to have buy it, lease it, rent it, or forget it? Yes. Well, I added must buy it because I felt that the Bolt was a must buy. Like, like, a, like a super good yeah, category, super good. like a super, super good. So you spent most of 12,000 miles with this because yes. you're the truck guy. Yes. So buy it, lease it, rent it, or forget it, or must buy it. You know what, I want to say buy it, but I'm going to say lease it. Okay, why is that? Um, it, it's mostly because the, the transmission. I wasn't in love with the transmission. Like, like we said, it's great power. The turbocharged engine is super. The, the utility of this little trucklet is great. But around town driving with the transmission, I didn't like. Yeah, so I would say, you know, as we talked about when we drove it, I hate the piano black interior. I, mm -hmm. I am 
fastidious about the interior of my cars and that just like sucks dust and dirt and you can never keep it clean so all i'm doing is wiping stuff off yeah so that that bugs me uh, also the hair grabbing thing bugs me <laughs> and you're right the transmission uh also bugs me but if you were to get the less expensive one buy it yeah then i would say buy the it. one that nathan has in fact right? nathan bought it yeah <laughs> buy it but this more expensive one you know you, you forego some of the fancier electronics and you'll be much happier especially if you go with the a speed and you know what i don't feel like his is any slower even with the smaller two liter well because it's lighter weight right yeah the more simple one so if you're looking for the santa cruz or the small utility pickup go for the more basic non-turbo one but overall i think our experience with it has been uh, outstanding and i'm going to be sad to see it go well guys as always this is roman and andre saying See you next time and check out alltfl.com if you want to see that bolt review. Ciao.